Hi, I'm Brian. I'm Bryce. I'm Luca. And today we're going to use lasers to show you how X-ray anti-scatter grids work in a little demo using Legos and lasers to show you how an anti-scatter grid works in X-ray imaging. Coming up here at How Radiology Works. There's Luca setting up the detector. And if you haven't seen our little video about X-ray contrast, check that one out. We talk in that video about the difference and how X-ray contrast is generated. But in this video, we're gonna use lasers. In that video, we used little balls to indicate the X-rays. Now we're using lasers. So there's our X-ray detector right there, that little yellow Lego. That's our X-ray detector. And that laser light is simulating a X-ray that's passing through our object. If the X-ray passes all the way through our object, it can get measured on the detector. Alternatively, if the X-ray hits a bone, it will get stopped in that bone most likely. And because it's gonna get stopped in that bone with a higher percentage, that's how we make contrast in our X-ray images between the X-rays that get stopped in the tissue, such as bone, and the X-rays which pass through the object and hit our detector. So these are what we call our good X-rays, the X-rays that either interact or they make it through. That's how we'd like to generate contrast. So I'm showing you that with this laser here in blue. We also have the possibility of what's called Compton scattering. And I'm simulating that here with this laser bouncing off a mirror. So see the red light, the red laser light is bouncing off a mirror and it's changing direction. So originally that red light is going in the direction towards that mirror and then it bounces off that mirror and changes direction. In Compton scattering, it's not a sudden automatic change like this, but rather there is some probability that the X-rays are scattered in different directions. They can go all around, more of them are gonna scatter towards the front, what we call forward focused, but some X-rays will scatter in this same way, where they're going in and then they'll come off and scatter. And what we would like to do is have a way to reduce the contribution of these scattered x-rays on the detector. So Gustav Bucky thought of such a way is actually to add something in front of our detector in order to block these x-rays, these scattered x-rays. So you can see what we've done here is we've put little green Legos in front of our detector, and those Legos are similar to an X-ray grid. So the idea is the X-ray is still bouncing off of the mirror here, simulating a single X-ray Compton scatter event that is going at that angle. But now that X-ray is being blocked from getting to the detector. It's not gonna be measured on that yellow detector because it is stopping at that green anti-scatter grid. And you can see for x-rays that are coming straight on, for x-rays that are coming straight on, such as our blue x-rays that we talked about, those x-rays are still going to be more likely to make it through and hit the detector. Now that you know why we want to use the anti-scatter grid, namely we want to stop the X-ray scatter photons at a higher rate than we're stopping the primary photons, so we have more primary photons getting through, you can see some of the geometry of a regular scatter grid where we talk about the height, so we refer to that as H. That's the height of what we call the septa, are these little X-ray attenuating objects and their little plates here we call septa they're typically made out of lead or something that's highly x-ray attenuating then we talk about the thickness of one plate is called t here and then the distance between the different plates is called d and then the grid ratio is what we talk about is just the height of this divided by the width of the opening that's called the grid ratio and then the grid frequency is how often does that grid repeat? So the grid repeats every once D plus T. 
So the frequency is one divided by T plus D. And things we wanna know is that the grid ratio, higher grid ratios lead to more X-rays being stopped. And again, preferentially more scatter X-rays being stopped. So they're going to be better at blocking scatter at the higher grid ratios. But when the grid ratio starts to get too high, you also will be blocking more of your primary radiation. And that's why there's a trade-off between the grid ratio that you want to use. You're gonna to wanna to check out our video that we have about the Bucky factor and the contrast improvement factor. And those are dependent on the grid ratio and they quantify the ability of the grid to improve the contrast to see objects. But then also there's a relative dose penalty which is quantified by the Bucky factor. Then finally, we're gonna talk about the geometry of a focus grid. Again, you know in X-rays, our X-ray tubes are typically divergent, where X-rays are coming off from a relatively small area on the focal spot, and they're coming off in this cone type of a shape. And that divergent nature means that it would be ideal if the x-ray grid is actually pointed towards that focal spot. That way we can most preferentially block the scatter photons while letting the primary photons through. If the grid is not focused, then you will have cutoff, which occurs earlier, relatively outside of the, at the outer regions in the field of view, because the grid will start blocking more of the primary photons at that point. So this is the idea of a focused grid. And again, the grid wants to be focused on the focal spot. And that's why you need different grids for different distances from the X-ray source, because that focusing is different or the relative angle that you want the septa to be pointed, that changes as you move closer and further away. So farther from the x-ray source, you need less focusing and closer to the x-ray source, you need more focusing. So if you were infinitely far away from your x-ray source, it would look like just parallel beams and you wouldn't need any focusing. And if you're very close to your x-ray source, it's gonna be coming straight out at an angle and you're going to need significant focusing in order to best block those scattered photons while letting the primary photons through. Again, that's the idea behind the focused grid. Sorry, I couldn't demonstrate that for you with the Legos, but we'll just show you here in PowerPoint. <laughs>